You know, the NBA's MVP award used to actually mean something. A badge of honor where the best players in the league would grind it out for 82 games to see who had the best season, was the most valuable and most impactful player in the league for their team. And now lately, it's turned into nothing more than a who do we like, what's a good storyline, who has some made-up analytic statistics. You know, not who's the most valuable, not who's the most important, not who's the best player. It's an absolute joke. And even more so, back-to-back MVPs was an elite group of guys. The best of the best to ever play the game. Except for maybe Steve Nash. But Steve Nash was a great point guard. Kind of the odd man out of this group. But fittingly enough, they've made a joke of it again. Giving it to the Joker in Denver, Denver, Nikola Jokic. Absolutely embarrassing decision by the NBA writers. I know, I know, it's a regular season award. But good God, how could you watch basketball this season and not tell me there are three other players that are not only better than Jokic, had a better season than Jokic, and are way more impactful for their team? I'm going to break down everything going on, tell you who these guys are, why it should have went to my personal favorite. But if you could first like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you get these daily update videos, share this video with your friends. It really helps the channel out a lot. We are growing like crazy. All right, so Denver Nuggets center Nikola Jokic has won back-to-back MVPs. Okay, really? He's a back-to-back MVP winner over Giannis Adenokounmpo, who is the best player in the NBA by a good, good margin right now. Joel Embiid, who is by far the most impactful player for his team, absolutely dominant at the exact same position as Jokic plays. I mean, good God, Philadelphia is nothing without Joel Embiid for all season. I mean, the numbers bear this out, and it's not even close. And how about Luka Doncic, the absolute stud young kid out of Dallas who carries that team and is a walking bucket? I just don't understand how the NBA writers can look at this. Now, I get it. Denver was super beat up this year, and Jokic led the Nuggets to the sixth seed in the West. Congratulations. And guess what? For the second year in a row, Jokic is sitting his big ass on a couch when the award's even given out. He can't even get out of the first round. He got beaten five this year against Golden State. Now, he's super undermanned, but seriously, how can you look at these numbers? Some made-up, oh, analytic, oh, he's the greatest guy on paper. Cool. Do you watch the basketball games? The Sixers were left for dead against the Miami Heat until Joel Embiid came back. With the man's got a broken face, he's got a torn ligament in his thumb, and it's now 2-2, and it's anybody's series. How could you watch that and say, oh yeah, Embiid isn't having a better season? Do you realize who was on the Philadelphia 76ers before they traded for James Harden? Nobody. It was a bunch of nobodies. Tyrese Maxey was not the kid he has developed into right now. Tobias Harris was nowhere near what he used to be. It was Embiid, Embiid, Embiid. Look at these numbers. Jokic, 27 points a game, 13 boards, 7 assists. That's pretty great. That's what he did last year. He's a liability on defense. Joel Embiid is the best defensive center, offensive, defensive center in the game. His impact is unbelievable. You can say Rudy Gobert is the best defensive center, but Rudy Gobert can't guard on the perimeter and he can't make a layup. So Rudy Gobert is useless. Giannis Adenokounmpo is the best player in the league. It's not even close, I think, at this point. He's physical. He can play in the post, out the post, shoot. Every, he can do everything. The Bucs don't make the playoffs without Giannis. Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton are not making the playoffs in the East. Maybe they get into the play-in tournament, but they ain't making the playoffs. Look at this. 30 points a game, 11 boards, 5 assists, uh, one and a half steals, uh, almost 2 blocks, 1 and a half blocks a game. What are you, this is crazy. In 32 minutes, Embiid, same thing. 11 rebounds, 30.6 points, 4.2 assists, a steal, a block and a half. I just don't get it, but here's where you get it. Jokic is all great in these advanced metrics that they're using. This is so stupid. I mean, you just have to watch the games to know, yeah, Nikola Jokic is a great player. He's really, really good. He was not the best player on the court this season. I understand it's a regular season award, but good God, it's so frustrating. What we have constantly seen now, the MVP used to be a amazing thing. Like, guys would kill each other to win the MVP, and it meant a lot. Look at the list of guys who have won two MVPs. It's something crazy. Now, here's a typo. These guys haven't all won back-to-backs. There's only been a few that have won back-to-backs. Giannis has won back-to-back. Steph's won back. 
LeBron, Steve Nash, Tim Duncan, Jordan, Magic, Larry Bird, Moses Malone, Kareem, Wilt, and Bill. Those are the only ones that have won back-to-back. And then Karl Malone and Bob Petit are the only other ones to win it twice. Jokic does not fit on this list of back-to-back winners. These are the greatest basketball players to ever play the game. Maybe you add Kobe Bryant in there onto this list, and that's your top list of greatest players to ever play the game of basketball, minus Steve Nash. Steve Nash was an aqua one. He was the first high-powered offense in NBA history, really, in this, like, two shots a second game that the Suns had run, and so that was kind of why Nash got his back-to-back. But this is insane. Nikola Jokic is not deserving to be on this list. He's a really good player. He's not impactful in the way he needs to be, especially in big playoff games. It's so, so stupid that the NBA has turned this into kind of a joke Kind of a laughing stock. Nobody should even really care about this anymore. I'm frustrated because Joel Embiid actually did care about this award and actually did carry a really bad Sixers team with the Ben Simmons nonsense. He only had Harden for like 25 games here. And they got them within... They got the four seed in the East because they played into it because everyone was afraid of Brooklyn. If they were really playing full strength, the Sixers probably would have been the two seed, but they were scared of Brooklyn. I ain't going to deny it. They didn't want any part of Brooklyn in the first round, and they got the four seed. So it's just so stupid that the NBA writers and these nerds have turned this into like, yeah, we kind of like this. Look at the numbers. This is good. Like, watch the basketball games. This guy is not as impactful as the three guys I listed. I mean, we haven't even dipped our toes into Luka here, which absolutely carries a pretty mediocre Maverick squad to where they are now. He's been the dominant force for that team, but he's a young kid. You know, Luka's got multiple MVPs in his future. I ain't worried about that one. But how could Joel Embiid have a better season than last year and lose to the same guy who had a kind of the same season that he had last year? He didn't improve himself. And Joel Embiid improved himself. It's just so stupid. I know it's a homer bias, but this is a complete joke. The MVP is a waste of time now. Used to be the best war- award in basketball. Used to actually mean something, like I said. Let me know what you guys think. Am I overreacting? Is this stupid? Who the hell cares about the MVP? All we really care about is a finals MVP and a championship, really. But it's just so stupid that the NBA writers have turned this into kind of a joke. Nobody gives a shit about the MVP anymore. And they've done it to themselves. They've discredited themselves. Again, let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with your friends. And I'll uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow.